Hey, welcome back to Sailing Cedra McClyde. In this episode, I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of the installation of our new solar panels that we did around the cockpit. We were able to order these 100 watt Renegy solar panels through Amazon Mexico at a cost of about 140 Canadian dollars each. After some frustration with multiple ID verifications by Amazon to make sure I wasn't a scammer, the panels were quick to arrive to the boatyard where I had them shipped to. The install started by removing the lifelines from the cockpit. Next, I used a hacksaw to remove the eye that the lifelines had been attached to because it was in the way for installing the new stainless steel fittings for the tubing. Once that was removed, I filed the cuts to make them smooth and installed the fittings and tubing. Okay, I've uh, got this put in place now and I think it'll work pretty good. I'm gonna put a little epoxy or something on the top of the stanchion because it's aluminum and the stainless steel combined with the aluminum, it'll cause corrosion. So not only that, it'll also make it so it's a nicer fitting. It's just a little tad loose right now. I found a, a little bolt that fits right through the hole that existed where the lifeline used to go through. So yeah, next steps are just finishing up that and then getting that lifeline put around the top of the uh, stanchion and put the panels on. So where I'm at right now is I have these bars across the back cut and I have holes in them now. I've drilled holes to put the bolts through. And so I've got one on, I got a second one on. So we're almost actually getting one of the panels on finally. So this is what it looks like so far. Um, it's bolted on there real good. This is the little swivel um, where it'll rotate on the bar right over there. And then we'll be wiring it in after that. So I'm uh, feeling optimistic that I'll have this wired and installed by this evening and we'll be ready to roll with 400 watts of solar tomorrow instead of the 200 we have now. These little attachments here with the lifelines, this is temporary. I can't find the parts here in Mexico, so when we get home, we'll, we'll spruce this up a bit. We may actually also replace these lifelines with Dyneema instead, because um, that seems like just the way to go these days. It's lighter and it's just as strong or stronger than the stainless steel and more affordable. Okay, one's installed. High stakes over top of the water here. Just getting the uh, final fitting on here before I put the next pipe section in. One other thing I did after I connected the stainless steel was put some epoxy in the fittings because the little set screws were just not nearly as strong enough. Um, I thought about drilling bolts through, but I'd seen some other folks use epoxy in these kind of fittings and that's worked great. A few times they pulled out on us, but the epoxy has completely stopped that. I'm still installing the solar right now, but it just got a lot easier. I got some cable for free off a of fellow boater like two years ago and just had it stowed away. And here it is. And it's a perfect length and running it was super easy. I brought it in through the aft cockpit combing and then down in through by the steering. And then there was just all these perfect little lines and holes that brought the line to where it needs to go, where right by the charge controller, where I'm going to splice it into the existing solar and then just have it all together in parallel. So we're gonna have 400 watts instead of 200. And I'm very excited about that. Yay! So here is where the cable is coming through from the starboard side panel. And then I'm gonna bring a cable across from the port side uh, panel, join them here into this one line. And that's gonna to go to the charge controller and join the other two panels. So yeah! So the fact that we flew down and then took a bus to San Carlos meant that we couldn't bring a whole lot of stuff with us. What I did bring was the attachments that pivot the solar panels on the stainless steel tubing. I didn't bring the stainless steel tubing, but I was able to purchase it off a fellow in San Carlos. He also does some welding and his name is Jorge. And apparently he's really good with his welding as well, but he was able to cut the 
stainless steel tubing for me and got a few of the fittings as well. The fittings are not readily available in San Carlos. There is a little marine store, Alpha Marine, that did have some. They had three of the four that I needed. And so I, I had to go hunting around and end up finding a used one. It was a little bit of a mission to find the extra bits, but we got it done anyhow. These clamps have been really excellent for allowing us to pivot the solar panels. So as you can see here that we have them propped up with these sweet little pieces of bamboo that we cut to keep them propped up. We can also pivot them 180 degrees or more. And so that if the sun's on one side of the boat, we can have both the panels facing that direction. That's been really helpful if we've had a cloudy day or a day where we're sailing or just bad sun angles as the boat moves around an anchor. These clamps are available at West Marine. They can fit onto one inch and I think three eighths stainless steel tubing, either or they come with the fittings for both. So you can find them West Marine, I'm sure at other places as well. Other little parts we bought were just this, these bits of aluminum bar to be able to bolt the clamps on and then all the fittings, stainless steel fittings, just kind of pretty standard stuff that is available at most marine stores. So now that we have this extra 200 watts of solar, it's been such a relief that we don't have to really worry about electricity. Even on cloudy days, we've been just fine. And on sunny days, when we're getting kind of average solar, where the boat's moving around, not always ideal angles, we're generally at 100% by about 11 a.m., which has been really nice. And that's including running the Starlink, which we didn't have last year. So that's a pretty big draw. I'm able to run the freezer at much colder temperatures so we can even have ice cream and things like that in there, which is really nice. Before we were kind of running it only at like 28 Fahrenheit. And we also use our freezer for keeping our, our cooler stocked with ice. So we make ice in there and that's a, a constant thing we're doing. And so that it's been really, really helpful to be able to make ice and, and not be worried about that. With all that being said, it's a, we're just outside the solstice right now. So this is the shortest days of the year and lowest sun angle. So it's only going to get better from here. Now with our total of 400 watts of panels, two of which can rotate to get better sun angles, we have all our power needs met. We only have two deep cycle batteries. So at night, we still go into a bit of a conservation mode. We can use laptops and we could use Starlink for a while if we wanted to. Um, but I try to keep the batteries at 70% or above my lead, lead acid batteries. That'll extend their life so much further than if you bring it down to 50%, which is okay, but you're gonna shorten their life a lot if you do that. So yeah, all in all, it's been a really nice installation. It's kind of the, the most exciting thing we've installed in a long time and has made life just so much easier, not really having to think about electricity at all. So thanks for watching this little bonus episode. We're gonna be doing these from time to time and I hope you are enjoying them and are excited to see some of the upgrades we've done here on C. Drew McLeod. Bye for now.